Hi guys, I'm back again. I'm like a bad penny, I just keep showing up. Anyway, I just wanted to share a little tip that I did, as you all know. Um, I'm on a low spend, sometimes a no spend year that's just started. So, so far so good, January went real well. And um, February, I'm working on that now too. But anyway, I wanted to give you a little tip. Now, as you all know, well, my newcomers may not know this, but I'm a cookbook junkie. Can't help myself anyway. Um, but what I did uh, last month, because I do like to read cookbooks, you know, some people read novels but I like to read cookbooks. I mean, there's other things I like to read too, but that's one of my favorite things to do. So what I did was I went to our local library and I got out a big stack of cookbooks and there's a couple more around here somewhere. And this morning I've just been going through them because I have to return them tomorrow. And I did read them and look through them but that doesn't do you any good if you don't have the cookbook and you find recipes that you like. So, ta-da! I took pictures of all the recipes that I like on my cell phone. And what I liked about that was that I don't have all these big cookbooks hanging around and only want to reference, you know, maybe 10 recipes or something out of the cookbook. So that actually worked out real well. And I'm going to load these pictures onto my computer and put them in a file. And then I'll delete them off my cell phone because I use this for filming and it fills up all the time. And then I have to go buy a new memory card. So <clears throat> that was, <clears> that. <throat> frog in my throat. So that was one tip that I wanted to share with you guys. But I also wanted to talk a little bit about uh, being older and being retired and going on this low no spend year. And at this stage in my life, you know, I don't want to be a real cheapskate and not enjoy the fruits of my many years of labor. So just to clarify what I'm doing, I don't have a real high income, but I have enough, I have my home, I have enough things that I don't need anything else. But having overshopped, I do need to pay off some bills. And that is the purpose for me to do this low spend, no spend. So once I get my bills paid off, I'm just going to be very mindful of my income. And it's not like I won't have any money at all for a few extras. Can I go to Fiji for three months? No, I don't have that kind of money. But can I take a nice vacation once a year? Yes but I want to plan for that. I want to save for that. I don't want to charge it. I don't want those bills hanging over my head because that makes me a little crazy. So I just kind of wanted to clarify that, that as you get older, you know, like they say, you can't take it with you. So you should enjoy your money too. You know, enjoy your time with your family and your friends. If your thing is going out to lunch with friends, then go out to lunch with friends. There's the old saying, you can have anything you want, but you can't have everything. So pick and choose what it is that's important to you and go with that. So that's what I'm doing. And that's why I've allotted $100 a month to go out with my family and friends for a lunch, Dinners are expensive, so I'd rather go to breakfast and lunch, but it, um, 
it fulfills the purpose of getting together with my family. Now, I don't like to have people over to my house that often because not everybody likes dogs, you know, and I have three dogs and I love them dearly and I don't lock them up when somebody comes over. So for me, it's just easier if I meet someone out for lunch uh, once in a while, I will go to a friend's house and have lunch and I enjoy that too. But that's what I do. So if that's something you like and you're not in dire straits, like you can't pay your bills at all, you might want to think about adding a couple of um, not necessities, but a couple of wants into your no spend, low spend. So, and, and if your thing is going to a thrift store maybe once a month or even once a week, just set a limit on the amount that you can spend. If it's $5, $10, you know, whatever your limit is, maybe it's $20 for a month. Because taking all the pleasure out of doing the no low spend is pretty much a recipe for failure in my opinion. But if you have something to look forward to, if if you're if you're a clothes person, you know, set yourself, okay, this month I can spend $25 on a blouse or whatever whatever it is that your pleasure is, you you are better off to incorporate some of that into your your uh, low spend, no spend. If it's eating chocolate every day with a cup of coffee, then allow for that. But you can't allow for everything. So you have to really pick your top priorities and something that you're going to look forward to that speaks to you where you'll be successful in your no spend, low spend time. And a lot of people say, Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that, you know. But you can, even if it's start off with a day, start off with a weekend. You know, it doesn't have to be a marathon of low spend, no spend, or do it every other week. So that, you know, but then don't go crazy on the week where you're doing a uh, just regular, not low spend, no spend, you know, where you're spending regular amounts of cash. Just don't go crazy. So, and then I think as a younger person, um, I think being mindful of your income, if you have, uh, say you wanna buy a house, you know, there again, open a savings account, do what it is you wanna put in there for your house, and then allow some money for some, I can't really call them luxuries. I'll, I'll just have to call them wants. And I think, in my opinion, that is the best way to be successful in a low spend, no spend. Now, one of my, I've talked about this before, and, you know, you guys know this, my nemesis is Amazon. So I don't want to totally get rid of my Amazon account because I have Amazon TV, I enjoy getting things on Amazon, but I have to pull in the reins on spending on Amazon. So what I do is I just put things into my cart and I leave them there. And sometimes they're in there for two, three weeks. And then, you know, I'll look at them and it's like, well, do I really want that? Don't I want that? So I try not to impulse buy on Amazon. Um, I do buy food things on Amazon, uh, things that I use for my vegan or vegetarian cooking that I can't get at Walmart or Aldi's because, um, I mean, vegan and vegetarian is not mainstream at this point. Uh, you know, we eat differently than other people do. And the, the stores are going to stock what they sell the most of. They don't really care what you eat, but they want to sell what it is that that sells the most. So sometimes it's a little difficult 
to get ingredients that I need to make basic food in the grocery store. Now I have to say they are getting so much better um, with their options and their choices. When I first stopped eating meat back about eight years ago, it was almost impossible to get anything that was not meat in, in a grocery store, at least here in Ohio. We're a little behind. You know, if something's catching on in California or on the East Coast, we're like about five years behind, seriously. But anyway, um, so finding other sources of protein and other sources where I can buy uh, the ingredients I need, I use Amazon for that. And it isn't always cheap, um, but the things that I do buy, I can usually combine and like make my own uh, vegan or vegetarian meats. I've made sausages, I've made roasts, I've made burgers, you know, pretty much whatever a meat eater has eaten and what I used to cook in the past, I have made with plant-based protein. So that's another reason why I personally don't want to get rid of my Amazon account because uh, I need it for things like that. Another thing that I like to buy on Amazon is educational books. Other than cookbooks, that's what I read. I'm not a big novel person. Um, I like to learn new things. Um, sometimes I'll get a beading book on how to do beading or how to do um, glass work or so those are the types of books that I read and I have a ton of them so I've really cut back on that but my wish list is like as long as your arm but that doesn't mean I'm going to buy it it's still in the wish list and then down the road if somebody says oh I don't know what to get you you have everything you know I can always say well I have a shared gift list on Amazon if you want to look at that and maybe there's something in your budget that I would like that you could get me then you know that's a great thing to do there too. So anyway I just wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between denying yourself everything and, and being too cheap and being frugal and trying to save money or trying to pay off bills or anything like that, there's a big difference. And don't short, short change yourself. That's a tongue twister. And enjoy your life too. You know, you can't always have nose to the grindstone. But if you're like me and you overspent, well, then you have to make restitution somehow. So that's what I do. And uh, let me know what some of you guys do and what you think of, of you know, buying yourself uh, nice things every now and then to reward yourself. You know, even if it's a once a week latte, you know, don't do it every day. But if a once a week latte, if you love it, then go for it. You know, find the money without overspending to buy the things you love and be very mindful of what you buy. Um, I've been using up things like crazy, um, you know, hair products, face products, um, clothes, all kinds of things. And it feels really, really good. And it makes me not even want to buy new clothes or new facial lotions or, you know, new shampoos because I'm really enjoying using what I spent my money on and not feeling so guilty about having spent money on something and then not using it because it's all sitting there and it weighs like a ton of bricks on you that you spent the money on it and you're just not using it. So use up everything that you can and the things that you can't use up then Pass them on to somebody else and forgive yourself for having made a mistake. We all make mistakes. There's nothing wrong with that. And we will continue to make mistakes our whole life. It's just the nature of the beast. 
And honestly, a lot of times that's when you learn the most, after you make a mistake and then you make another mistake and each time you learn something and you become a little bit better at life. All right, my friends, that's all I have to say today. So if you, you know, need to copy some things from a book, use your cell phone. So I've even done that like in a store, if I'm looking at a, at a book and I see a recipe I like, I just whip out my cell phone, and take a picture of the recipe. So anyway, that's all I have for you today. Um, I wish you abundant blessings. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. Be kind. And I love you guys. Abundant blessings. And I'll see you next time.